Welcome to the YouTube Creators Hub podcast, where we help you conquer the internet one video at a time. We cover everything from how to start a YouTube channel to how to make a video go viral. And now, here's your host, the one and only Dusty Porter. Hello, creative people. Dusty here with another episode of the YouTube Creators Hub podcast. Got a few things to talk about before we get into the interview. Uh, this week, we're speaking with Michelle Dwyer from the Thrift Spy YouTube channel. Such a great interview. She's a newer YouTuber, but uh, we talk about some really interesting and valuable stuff. So stick around for that. Uh, I do want to mention uh, I have launched uh, my online business realm podcast and blog. Uh, that's going to be a space where I talk about all things online business, how I uh, quit my day job nine to five uh, and am making a full time living uh, online now. So if you're looking for quick, actionable tips that can help you uh, make money online, uh, go check it out. Online business realm, R E A L M. There's a podcast, a blog, I'm doing it all over there, uh, even a YouTube channel, which is something I'm going to talk about later on this show on how I'm going to use that as an experiment for this show uh, and actually growing a YouTube channel from the ground up and going to be sharing that experience with you here on this show. That should be something fun and unique we do. And I also want to let you guys know that this show, as always, is brought to you by the fantastic guys over at TubeBuddy, T-U-B-E-B-U-D-D-Y. If you're looking for some tools that can help you in your YouTube workflow and make your YouTube life easier, uh, guys, go check them out. Something that I was just discovering this week is the channel health report from the TubeBuddy app, allowing you to see all of your uh, com comparables to similar channels to you. And it's just a great way to go and kind of see where you're at, a good litmus test. So definitely go on over. I'll have the link below where you can click on it. Go check them out. It'll help the show out as well. It's called TubeBuddy. Again, so go check them out. We really appreciate them being a part of this show. Uh, I do want to briefly talk about VidCon. VidCon was this past weekend, uh, or week, four or five days, whatever they do now. And the one thing that stuck out to me is YouTube is going to release something that's similar to Periscope. So you're going to be able to live stream from your mobile device, just like you do like on Facebook Live, uh, Periscope, uh, other at Meerkat, other applications like that. But just looking at the screenshots, and I've talked to my contact at YouTube, and he should be uh, unlocking that feature on my channel in the next week or so. So I should be able to report back even more. But I think this is going to open up a whole new can of worms. I cannot wait to be able to be out and about and uh, be able to stream live to my audience. And I think for a lot of you guys, that may be something that you're interested in. So I'll definitely touch back uh, on this topic at a later date when I've actually had some hands-on experience with the YouTube mobile uh, live app there. So it's just another fantastic tool that YouTube uh, is again catching up with some other people who are already in that space. But uh, with a lot of things Google does, they do it right. And I think this is going to be done right. And I think you're going to be able to open up your content to a whole new audience. So definitely be expecting some more stuff from that from me. But I am no longer going to ramble on. I'm going to jump into the interview. We are joined today by Michelle Dwyer. She is a fairly newer YouTube creator based out of Baltimore. She runs the YouTube channel called Thrift Spy, where she tries to explore the life of trying to be an extroverted writer, taking her writing background and moving it onto the YouTube platform. Michelle, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Dusty? I am doing absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Uh, she reached out to me via email, had been listening to the show. I'm so excited uh, that she was finding some value from it. And as I said in the intro there, she is a fairly new YouTube creator. But with that being said, I wanted to bring on someone who had a different perspective uh, than people who were further along in the journey. So we're going to restructure the show a little bit today to uh, possibly let you guys get a different look into someone creating and starting and launching a YouTube career as Michelle's doing now. So Michelle, tell us a little bit about the Thrift Spy YouTube channel. So with Thrift Spy, I'm going for a Clarissa Explains It All 90s Nickelodeon vibe show from the point of view of an extroverted writer. So you do a lot of writing, and how do you plan to move that into the video space? Um, I am an avid diary writer, so I am I guess you could call it vlogging, but really I'm hoping to make it more of a variety show with um, you know, integrating Sometimes I'll be doing little sing-alongs on my banjo and I'll be interviewing different writers and um, just like a Sunny and Cher, Clarissa explains it all 
everything with writing but to the screen. So what made you want to do this? What made you want to say, you know what, I, I have some experience in, in doing some writing, but you know what, I want to move on to this crazy YouTube space. What made you des- make that decision? So I've always been a ham, and I spent my childhood doing community theater and obsessing over Celine Dion in my bedroom. So I guess I wanted to take my childhood dreams of singing to an audience that I had hand drawn and performing and take it to the internet where you literally have a worldwide audience instead of the fake one and I had in my bedroom. So like, what are your plans as far as like end goals for your YouTube channel? Like, do you want to make it into a business? Do you want to make it part of your brand? Are you going to launch it alongside of a blog or a website? Like what, what are your plans with the Thrift Spy YouTube channel? Yeah, as far as business goes, I certainly have an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, Although I'm totally nuts, I have a lot of odd jobs. I'm a karaoke DJ on the side. I work for a private investigator. I also work at a funeral home part time. So I have my hands in a lot of pots. But everyone, I guess, to be a writer, I always think that you need to be someone who has a lot of different life experiences. So all those jobs I've certainly written about. And with YouTube, I am just taking the page to video and I am going to be uh, launching a website and Thrift Spy, the name kind of sums up my life. I used to own a thrift store. I've written about thrifting. I think that that's really a niche that a lot of people who enjoy thrift shopping are absolutely wild about it. So it's cool that I can sort of take that to a next level because there's not a lot of stuff out there about thrifting, although it's not like no one knows what it is. So let's talk about your journey so far. And number one, I didn't know you were such a jack of all trades. I can't believe (laughs) you're doing so I'm a gene of all trades. I tell you what, you're doing so much. That's that's amazing. So again, that's what's great about YouTube is that for the most part, 98 to 99 percent of the creators on YouTube are not full time creators. They're people doing this on the side, doing it as a side hustle, doing it as just a hobby. And it's so interesting to talk to you. So let's talk about your journey so far on YouTube. What have you? What has been the number one thing you've learned so far that have that has helped you uh, with this whole YouTube thing? So actually utilizing a lot of things I learned from the YouTube Creators Hub. Um, I have used Fiverr, the website you actually recommended to um, make my channel more professional. I hired someone on there. Uh, Maybe you can explain a little bit more what Fiverr is all about, but I hired them to make an intro video for me, and then that came along with a nice picture that I'm using as my header. I like that. So as far as like outsourcing, sometimes people are afraid to do that. And if you don't know what Michelle's talking about, Fiverr's a great tool. Again, it's it's hit or miss. I mean, sometimes I've had great success with Fiverr sellers, and then other times I've had terrible uh, success. But again, a lot of times you're going to get what you pay for, and you're paying these people five, ten, fifteen dollars, and you have to understand that. But for the most part, when I've reached out to people on Fiverr to do stuff for me on my YouTube channel or my websites, whatever it may be, I've been very pleased with the money that I spent and looking at Michelle's uh, feature image here and her intro video on her YouTube channel I can tell you they did her a really good job as well so if you're looking for some cheap creative stuff done for you uh, on the on the cheap with uh, you know starting at five dollars Fiverr is definitely the route to go beyond that beyond the images and the featured images and going to Fiverr to kind of start that jumpstart your channel what are you working on now to improve your channel and to make sure that you have a successful launch here with the Thrift Spy channel? So I'm, I also took a screenwriting class. Um, I took video editing in college, so that will help with YouTube. But I took a screenwriting class and YouTube videos, it's strange because it's not exactly a screenplay. But for me, I do think that it's important that I generalize what I'm going to say. I mean, I I definitely like the genuine conversation aspect of YouTube where someone is just talking to you. But since um, you guys talk all the time about how long people watch your videos, and I really am going to shoot for that five minute mark. And when you're talking, it is so easy to just go on and repeat yourself. So I'm really working on writing a miniature screenplay with bullets and things I want to say. So that will 
I think help me out a lot before I just dive in and just start talking all the time. I really want to have things that I want to hit. So you're wanting to do more of a scripted series. And you and I discussed pre-show about the show that you have coming called Right or Wrong Series. Uh, Right being spelled, obviously, W-R-I-T-E. And on your YouTube channel, it says coming soon, which I like that. You're letting your audience know, hey, I've got something really cool coming up and I want you guys to know about it. So tell me briefly about that series and what you're wanting to do with it. So that simple pun, right or wrong, is kind of exactly what it sounds like. We're going to be talking about writing and the right way to do things. And then I'm going to interview a lot of local Baltimore artists, uh, particularly writers, poets, short storyists, and talk to them about things they've done. With writing, it's so easy to go back and see short stories you've written and just cringe. And I'm sure that's what a lot of other YouTubers say too, like early videos, you're cringing, but you need to get over that because in order to do something the right way, you're going to have to probably do it the wrong way a few times too. I did something last night. It's so funny that you mentioned that. I did something last night that I haven't done in a long time. I was on my laptop and uh, my wife and my little girl were asleep and I actually went on to YouTube, went to my channel, went to my videos and sorted by oldest to newest. And I wanted to see, I don't know why I did this, Michelle. I don't really know what prompted me to do this, <laughs> but I clicked on my oldest video. And uh, for those of you who don't know my YouTube story, it was kind of happenstance kind of I stumbled upon even making YouTube videos so there was a, a big time span there where I didn't make videos on my channel but I clicked on the oldest video and I realized oh my goodness this is so bad and I, I barely could hear myself I sounded you know I am from the south and I do my best on my podcast and, and anything that I present myself on the internet to try and kind of tone back the southern accent but uh, it, just, it, it comes through and I, I realized I was like oh my goodness I sound so Southern and I can barely hear what I'm saying. And the video was just very horribly produced, but it made me realize as I watched that video and then now look at my newer stuff, I realize how far I've come and what I have learned to get me to that point. And you're exactly right. You've sometimes, not sometimes, you've, you've got to fail in order to pick yourself back up, dust yourself off, and then start creating that great content. So on that note, let's segue into that. What are some things that you've done, some mistakes that you've made uh, with your YouTube channel, creating video content that have led you to to become a better YouTuber? Well, I haven't gotten super deep into it yet, but I actually, before I hit a mistake, I'll have to tell you the weird uh, first video that I really uploaded on a whim that somehow I was surprised got so many views. I did a review for, um, again, I, I'm an odd job antique dealer who loves zany different products. I have a fascination with teeth. I think that teeth are really interesting. I have no interest to be a dentist, but I bought these these teeth that you mold to your own that you, it makes you look like you have that perfect news reporter, you know, that that flashy smile, but they're also like a medical tooth company that, you know, if someone's missing a tooth, then they can use these if they're going on a job or interview or something like that. So anyways, I reviewed these teeth online and I, I had had YouTube, um, just like go into my spam folder in my email. I didn't care about certain alerts. This was a lot like a while ago. Now I obviously do care. Um, but I like forgot all about it. And a year later I, I was like, I forgot I posted that, that tooth video. I mean, it was just posted on my phone. Didn't do any editing, just hit YouTube from my phone and it had like almost 30,000 views. And I had like 50 comments that were so nice. Like people just like, thank you. I love the way you explained this product. Um, I didn't have any negative feedback. I mean, I guess there are like a couple thumbs down, but I was just, I did that on a whim. So in a way it was a mistake. Like I just didn't think about it at all. Didn't care. It was just a product review. And then that's what really inspired me. These fake teeth that I ordered online that I did a review for. And it was like, wow, imagine if I actually put effort into this. This was something I did so off the cuff. You know, imagine what I could do if I actually really tried. When we were having technical issues earlier, a few minutes ago, about 30 minutes ago, I actually, while I was waiting on you to do something, I actually clicked on that video because I saw that it had so many views in relation to your other videos. And I assume you're talking about the Imako Smile Review 9 out of 10 video? 
Correct. And I watched uh, about the first minute or two of that video, and you're right. You have great presence on camera even back then in the beginning, and it's just so funny. You know, it's a similar story to myself in that when I posted um, one of my first videos, you know, over five years ago, you know, I, I left YouTube for about a year and a half and then got an email stating that, hey, you know, would you like to monetize your YouTube content? And that's kind of what led me to the path to actually start creating and actually looking into creating YouTube videos. But it's so funny the videos that sometimes we think are not going to garner any attention or any views. And I'm sure when you were making that video, you were not making it thinking, I'm going to have 22,000 other people watch me review these fake teeth. And it was such a, a funny, interesting video that you did. And I, I, I would like to pull something out of it, though. The one thing that I noticed about that video in relation to your other videos that you have here on your channel is you did a really good job of pulling people in with the title. You did something uh, in radio that we call, you, you you had a good pitch, and the title of your video was Amako Smile Review, 9 out of 10, and then you had an exclamation point, and you had a really good thumbnail of you actually putting it up to your mouth, and that, again, is just great knowledge to know when it comes to YouTube. You know, you need to have a good thumbnail, you need to have a good catchy title, and you had both of those, and then you can see a year later that video has garnered uh, over 22,000 some odd views, and the one thing that I would say to you is do not expect all of your YouTube video comments, uh, if you're listening to this and Michelle as well, do not expect the YouTube comment section to be a heavenly place because uh, I have I have often said the YouTube comment section is possibly the cesspool of the internet and I believe that. Uh, you know, And for me in my audience and my community with me doing technology stuff, I would say over 90% of the comments are extremely kind. Like you said, they're so nice. But then there's that 8 to 10% that are just absolutely horrible. I tell my wife all the time, I'm like, don't read the comments of my videos because it would really scare you. You know, It's one of those things that I don't even know where these people are getting the stuff they're saying. And uh, the thing that I would also say to people is you can't let those type of people drag you down. Don't worry about what people are saying. A lot of times I tell people who are starting out on YouTube, don't even look at your comments or you know, don't turn the comment section off if you're starting YouTube because you want that interaction. Interaction is good for your videos. It's actually good to help you rank your videos. So what an interesting story, Michelle, about you reviewing uh, th those teeth there and just getting a whole bunch of views. So fun, so fun. So let's talk about tools of the trade, Michelle, because you look like you're doing some good stuff here uh, with your videos that you're producing now. What are some tools of the trade, whether it be hardware, software, internet resource that you've found so far to help you uh, with your YouTube workflow? So when I was in college, we used Final Cut, which I've realized now is not that expensive, but at the time it was really an expensive program like 10 years ago. Um, so I went home and I would get use my iMovie, which was just already on my MacBook, which I just learned does not come with Macs anymore. You have to buy it. It's only like $15 though. Um, That's terrible. I know. Terrible. <laughs> I always... I always thought, you know, I'm getting a new computer uh, with Apple because it comes with all these great things and iMovie is not included anymore, but I had a gift card. So I just got it. It was $14.99 from the app store. And, um, I, it's funny because I, I just sort of coined this phrase. I was thinking about things I wanted to say to you. And I was thinking that YouTube in a way is sort of the selfie generation of videos because I'm going to mostly be utilizing the internal camera on my MacBook Pro while starting out because a tip that I've gathered from all of your interviewers is that, um, you know, you don't want to spend a bunch of money right away. Like I'm just starting out. There's no need to shell out and get this fancy camera that I don't know how to use and just get frustrated and then end up never using it. So I'm really going to go with the bare basic stuff that I already have and just begin with what's already there. And for you, you know, you mentioned when I called you today via Skype that you just got a new microphone and the microphone sounds fantastic as, you know, everyone can hear over this interview. And, you know, again, I will always tell people uh, audio, you, you wouldn't believe this and people would, a lot of people would probably disagree with this, but uh, when it comes to YouTube and, and when you're starting out, not necessarily once you've become established, but when you're starting out, audio trumps video. 
And people ask me, well, how can you say that? It's YouTube. It's a video platform. Well, the reason why I can say that is if nobody can hear or understand what you are saying, then it doesn't matter how good your video production is because they're not going to watch your video because they're not going to know what it's about. And, you know, the thing is, if you are using your eyesight camera uh, with your iMac or MacBook or your PC, whatever, your webcam, you know, I have a webcam that... uh, I'm not sponsored by Logitech or anything. I don't want anybody to think that. But I have a webcam, uh, the C920, uh, that I got for 80 bucks off of Amazon. And I'm telling you something, it, the quality on that webcam, obviously it, it's not like a, a great point-and-shoot camera, but the quality on that webcam is so, so good. So if anybody's looking for a really good, inexpensive webcam on a budget uh, and you're wanting to take that step up from the uh, EyeSight camera, which is what Michelle's going to start off with, which, by the way, I think is a great idea, uh, the Logitech C920 is an absolute fantastic alternative. So uh, getting started with grassroots, with what you have, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, what microphone are you using, Michelle, just out of curiosity? This is a condenser microphone by Toner, T-O-N-O-R, and it was $20 on Amazon. And it has a little tripod already attached, and it's just a um, USB. Just plug it right in. There's no special program with it. <laughs> well, you are ready to go for sure. So let me ask you this, Michelle. What are your strengths and weaknesses when it comes to creating content, whether it be writing or YouTube videos? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Um, I think that I am very creative and I'm always, you know, weary to just say, oh, I'm a creative person. But I have so many ideas, which can also be a weakness sometimes because I want to take them to this grand level. And that's why I am happy that I'm just starting off with these these small things that I already have in terms of hardware and software. But um, I think that you certainly want to reach for the top, but you need to sort of calm down the grand illusions when just starting out because that will take away from the simple message you're trying to do and the video that really I just want to – I do want to help people. I know I watch videos all the time. Um, in terms of the right or wrong thing, like focusing on wrong. Like it's always great to see people you admire and think, you know, they had to start from somewhere too. Absolutely. that such good advice. And we all make mistakes. And people sometimes when they're thinking about creating video online, the one thing that I was thinking about this, and I'm going to get a little transparent here uh, in this show and, and in the opening, I might mention a little more about this, but um, I begin to think this week, uh, we went on vacation last week and had to come home uh, within a day because my uh, my wife's grandmother actually had a, a stroke and uh, ended up passing away a couple of days ago. And I was I was fairly close to her. And obviously, my wife and her family were extremely close to her. It, it, it made me realize, number one, that, that we're, we're only here for a short amount of time. Uh, and with that being said, if you have a voice and you have a message, you know, don't don't be afraid and don't put off putting yourself out there, whether it be YouTube or creating a podcast or a blog, because even if you only have one, two, three listeners or viewers, you know, they may need to hear what you have to say. And they may be going through something that you're going through. And through your videos, through your content, they can actually, you know, get help from that. It's kind of like therapy a lot of times with YouTube. And just put yourself out there because it's important to know that there are people out there who need to hear what you have to say. So I completely agree with Michelle and what she's saying there. So let me ask you this. Getting closer to the end of the interview, Michelle, what is something that you wish someone would have told you when you were first uploading that first video to YouTube? So to reference again, a lot of the interviews that you've done on YouTube Creator Hub, um, I think just being genuine, which I don't think I needed to be told that, but just to hear that over and over again, that if you're genuinely making a video because it's something inside of you that you just have to let out, I think Again, you don't want to lean on those comments because you're going to get bad ones, but you're also going to be surprised and get really, really nice ones that just seem to come out of nowhere. And, you know, I'm not trying to, I really admire these, um, you know, there's a lot of makeup tutorials and beauty tutorials on there. And that's not my forte or my scene, but I think when people are doing thing, anything that's, I don't want to say vain, but when you're like, oh, look, look how you know, glamorous I am, that's when there's a lot of haters. But on my end, I'm just like, listen, I like to write. This is a video for other people who like to write. I'm not telling you that I'm the world's best writer, 
that I'm not, I'm not making my videos to show off and say, look how great of a writer I am. I'm making it for a community. Like let's get through this together. In my case, I'm an extroverted writer. So I need that human interaction to keep me going because I physically get drained when I'm by myself just writing. And unfortunately writing is a solitary pursuit. So, you know, it's totally fine. You know, there's comedians out there and, and that's, you're trying to sell yourself, which every video is trying to sell yourself. But at the same time, I think if you're just genuine and you're doing it also for a sense of community, you can't go wrong. A lot of times it's therapy for us as well, right, Michelle? And the fact totally. that you're getting that out there, like you're getting what you have inside of you out. So, you know, sometimes we just need that platform. And I've heard a lot of larger YouTubers talk about this. I've been actually, I would recommend if you haven't already, if you're listening to this show, Go back and look at the VidCon um, playlist from VidCon this past week, and there's a lot of larger YouTubers who are talking about their careers, how they got started, and a lot of time, once you reach that level and you're getting you know millions of views per day and things like that, it's hard to relate, and that's kind of why I like the show that I'm doing uh, in the fact that I'm bringing together a community of people who are doing it uh, at the same time, and they're kind of in the same uh, atmosphere, in the same place in their journey on YouTube, uh, which is why I love talking to different people on YouTube like Michelle who's just getting started and then some guy like Tyrone Magnus who's you know over you know 1.2 million subscribers so I want a different variety on my show but I would definitely recommend going back and watching those VidCon uh, panel videos and just listening to these creators talk about like you know even if nobody watched, you know, and it's easy to say that. And I'm sure listening to them, you might be thinking, well sure they can say that they have millions of views making thousands of dollars. But I truly believe that for them, it is therapy. It is the ability to have something inside of you and, and, and wanting to be able to get that out. And then once you're on YouTube, you have a platform. And when you have a platform, you know, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that platform. With this show, you know, getting 15, 20, 25, 30,000 downloads per episode a lot of times, I now have a platform. And I now want to help people garner their platform. And that's why I really enjoy and I'm so invigorated every time I do this show because I'm passionate about helping people launching their YouTube careers. And so go back, watch those VidCon videos. So, Michelle, in closing, what is something that you would say to someone right now listening to this who is like, I don't know, I'm on the fence, I, should I start a YouTube channel, should I not? What is something that you would tell that person? Well, again, to reference one of your episodes, um, I think it was your second episode when you talked to Dr. Bill Landon. Um, and he said that, you know, a lot of people when they're starting out on things, it's our tendency to think we can do things in isolation and you can, but you'll stay isolated, which that word like hit home with me so deeply that especially as a writer, which just happens to be my forte, whatever it is that you do if you want to be isolated, but then you've had that chip on your shoulder, like no one cares, no one knows what I'm doing. It's because you haven't put yourself out there. So you have to extend that in order to get that pat on the back if that's what you're looking for, if that's not what it is. But obviously, if anybody who's interested in YouTube wants an audience, they want someone to pay attention. I mean, for me, I always loved show and tell in school. You know, when you're in elementary school, you do show and tell. I couldn't wait until it was my turn. So YouTube is that chance for you to show and tell. And if that's what you want, then you got to show. I completely agree with everything you just said there, Michelle. And I, I can't tell you enough. One thing that I haven't mentioned uh, on this episode is, number one, you are actually, and I am absolutely, absolutely ashamed by this statement, you are actually the first female guest that I have had on the show. And I want people to know, I want people to know this, if you're a female out there listening to the show, and there's a lot of them because they email me <laughs> all during the week, I want you to know it's not because I don't want female creators on the show because I think they have a different perspective, a different voice that they can talk from. And you can hear that just from speaking to Michelle today. But Michelle's the first female guest I've had on the YouTube Creators Hub show. And I'm ashamed to even say that. I've got some coming down the line. I've had a couple cancel on me. Uh, but I have reached out to just as many females uh, as I have males. Uh, the percentages have just worked against me uh, in that regard. But Michelle, I do want you to know that uh, it's been great to speak with you, not only as a female YouTuber, but as someone just 
just starting out on YouTube or uh, on YouTube or what am I talking about? Someone just <laughs> starting out on YouTube. Uh, but let me ask you this. Where can people connect with you online? So um, YouTube.com slash thrift spy. Um, I'm really, uh, again, learning from you guys, just keeping that simple branding. And I, I was lucky that thrift spy I guess there aren't that many other people out there. I, I mentioned I work for a private investigator, so I love thrifting. And then that thrift sort of spy part comes in. Also writing, I feel like anyone who's a writer is also kind of a secret spy just looking in on life. But um, so thrift spy everything on Instagram, at thrift spy on um, Twitter. And I'm working on a website that will probably be thriftspy.net. And um. Yeah, and I'm glad I'm your first girl because there's a big girl power movement going on. And I'm excited to share that on YouTube, too. Absolutely. And trust me, we're going to have more on as the time progresses. This show is still, uh, this is episode 21 or 22. I can't remember. I'm a horrible host. But uh, <laughs> the thing is, is that this show is still in its infancy. I, um, just so you guys know, I'm actually in talks with YouTube right now. Uh, they've reached out to me. They're wanting to do some stuff as far as like reaching out and doing some stuff on the show. So uh, it is growing. Um, we are making a difference. And I cannot wait to see the future of this show in 20, 30, 40, 50 more episodes where we do have multiple female guests who are doing great things on YouTube. I'm going to do something really quick, really fun, and really interesting that I haven't done yet. So, Michelle, uh, we're doing a lot of new stuff here on this episode. Give me one YouTube channel that you watch that might be like a guilty pleasure of yours. I don't want to know. I don't know. I just want to know one YouTube channel that you watch that, that people out there may have never heard of. Glitter Fallout is a friend of mine, another Baltimore girl and she is a makeup tutorial video but she does it very in a very down-to-earth way and uh, she has a very eclectic taste of well glitter obviously which is just fabulous in every form so um, glitter fallout we're actually going to be collaborating hopefully uh, soon which again it seems to be a big tip with you guys like the more people just like we're doing right now collaborating like the more people that you can get together with that just helps you grow your audience and just get more confidence because you're working with people you admire. Guys, go check out. You said the channel name again was Glitter Rollout? Glitter Fallout. Glitter Fallout. Anything with glitter, Michelle says, is amazing. (laughs) Michelle, thank you so much for being on the show, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Dusty. Have a good one. You've been listening to the YouTube Creators Podcast. We want to thank you and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as support us on Patreon for great perks such as having your YouTube channel featured on the show and a link on our website. Until next time, keep uploading those videos.